Hello you guys, welcome back. My name is Javier and today we're going to be talking about iOS 17.2. It's been out for almost a week. There's a lot of new changes and a lot of new updates for it. Very excited to get right into it. Definitely going to see a lot of new changes and updates throughout the Apple, Apple world. Just like, also if you haven't heard already, they discontinued the MacBook Pro Touch Bar, which a lot of people liked and didn't like. I personally didn't like the Touch Bar myself. I'm glad they took that away because I don't think, for me, it was very useful. I did try to use it once in a while, but it was not, it didn't suit me that well. So Apple did take away that Touch Bar. So let's talk about a little bit of news. Apple, Apple Music used to have a voice plan using Siri, which lets you access Apple Music in a much cheaper price, which a lot of people kind of forgot that they had it or was an option. So the plan started at $4.99, but Apple did discontinue that service as of November. If you had a plan such as Apple One, you wouldn't have noticed this change. They did also change, the, the, they did also raise the prices on all the plans here. The premium starts at $37.95, the family plan starts at $25.95, and the in individual starts at $19.95. Apple has updated their return policy. If you're in the US, you have until January 8th of 2024 to return any Apple products. So if you bought anything between November 3rd or December 25th, you have the option to return it till January 8th. Tap to pay is now available in Ukraine. So now you'll be able to tap to pay to someone else. It did roll out in the US a while back ago. So with new with new features, let's go to the Notes app. So there's a couple changes here down in the bottom. If you go down here, tap on the markup tool. If you go down here, hit the plus, they removed the, the magnifier glass. We no longer have the mag magnifier glass anymore. People said it was down here where the shapes are, but I personally don't don't see it anymore so it looks like they took that off and neither is the blur tool for it for many people um i don't know what that why the reason they would remove these maybe a lot of people don't don't ever use them so they just remove them well hopefully they bring them back because i know a lot of people use the magnifying glass just to see what they wrote if they did bring them back i'll try to figure out where they hit them in your icloud send an apple has updated the recommend recommended for you page so you may have noticed a little bit of a difference in the organization and how it's listed here on the screen depending on the device that you're from or which ios that you have these these will pop up these might not pop up for you so if we tap into our weather app if we go down to our seven day forecast tap on any of these go down to totals you'll see participation which is which shows you the options as the past 24 hours or the next 24 hours. So this is something they added to show us the, the total rainfall amount. So if you go into our messages app and if you're in a group chat, it does give you the catch up feature, catch up button, which will bring you all the way to the top to the last message that you were in those kind of threads. So if you tapped on that, it will take you all the way up to the last person that texted you and then you just scroll down and see your messages from there. So also if we go to our settings, our Apple ID, and you scroll all the way down, contact, ooh, no, we scroll down, and if we go down to contact key verification, but if we turn it on here, contact key verification, hit continue, it does want you to update all your different devices on your account. So you do have to go to each one and verify and hit select yes to continue using this feature. Let me know if you guys are using this down in the comments below. I would love to hear what you guys think of it and how it works. Another update with iOS 17 is that it looks like they looks like Apple is working on iOS 17.1.1 so it should be out pretty soon to resolve that bug and some others which in some places which will resolve a bug where in your weather app if it's snowing in your area from the lock screen it does show you like a little pdf file on the side for some reason it doesn't show you the actual snow falling it just shows you that pdf kind of glitch um weird thing that popped up so it should fix that problem 
So pretty soon we should be seeing iOS 17.2 beta 2. It's been about a week or so since beta 1 came out. So hopefully Tuesday or Wednesday we'll have beta 2. Apple has also updated a firmware with the Apple AirTag. So if we go to their website, this is what Apple has updated to it. AirTag firmware 2.0. Point thirty six, which resolves an issue with the accelerometer not activating in certain scenarios. That's the most recent update from Apple for the AirTags. Also, we should be seeing the new MacBook Pros coming out pretty soon as they will be getting a update on day one, which will have a new build with macOS 14.1. So far, iOS 17.2 has been very promising then 17.1 beta 1. A lot of people have been having problems with battery drainage on their Apple Watches. iOS 17.2 brings a lot of hype and a lot of promising for this update. It has battery has been pretty well on the, on the iPhones. There is no heat whatsoever. There's no lag. There's no battery drainage at all. A lot of great experiences with it. Also, it doesn't it doesn't mean that there isn't any bug fix it, any bugs or other glitches that we've seen. The issue that I've mentioned before with the weather widget and on the lock screen not showing properly the weather. We had a notification bug that when you swipe from the bottom, it's also been a bug in the Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi issue connectivity where people have been experiencing Wi-Fi slowing down. So um, to to kind of fix that connectivity to reconnect to Wi-Fi, you basically swipe down here on the right, tap on the Wi-Fi, press it again, and it should reconnect to the Wi-Fi and it have a better connection. There's also been another issue where the touchscreen isn't working properly when you swipe back and forth. It kind of lags or just stays stuck. Also, when raising up the volume button. On either the volume or the ringer, the ringer just changes, the volume just goes up and, up and down, so you would do have to do a hard reset. Also, another one, when you're on speakerphone, the microphone isn't working properly for some users. Usually it just cuts out on them or doesn't pick up your voice. And we thought that it was fixed on 17.1. Hopefully it's fixed in 17.2. I haven't tested it out myself. Also, if you're using Apple Music, the play count isn't working properly. FaceTime isn't working properly on T-Mobile. For some reason, it's just T-Mobile Carrier. We don't know why, what's going on there. So there's another issue with the keyboard. So if we swipe down, let's see if I could have it show you. Right now it's working for me, but when people swipe down from the bottom, the keyboard doesn't pop up, it just stays down there. So it doesn't, it's not, it's working pro fine for me. All those bugs being shown and people have been experiencing with, the overall experience has been very well, but of course there's always going to be some bugs and updated versions of iOS. But this is still an early beta, but it has been the best beta I've used so far. So that's, that's it for any bugs that I've noticed and seen. Let me know down below if you've had any other bugs, problems, or any issues, or how to fix them as well. So far... Like I said, 17.2 beta 2 has been very good to me. I haven't had any problems. And I mean, the only way that I know how to fix these bugs was just a hard reboot on the phone. The overall experience, like I said, is promising. I haven't had any problems with overall heat as well. So the heat on the phone has stayed the same. So I haven't had any problems with that overheating. Right now, we've been using it for the whole entire video. Like I said, it's very nice and cool. Unlike before, in the past, we had that problem where it did overheat just by turning on the phone. Also, just to show you my battery cycles real quick here. We go to our settings, general, about, and if you scroll all the way down to my cycles down there, I have 46 battery cycles. And if we go back to settings, and we go down to... If we go down to battery, battery health and charging, it, we're at 100%, which it should be. Also, another quick quick thing I need to mention, if you're using screen on time on a stand, you would notice, if we go here, I have pretty good battery life, eight hours of screen active time and one hour and two minutes of screen idle time. But if you're using standby mode and display, I recommend doing 
I recommend turning on after 20 seconds because that does show you that is counted as screen active time. So that does count as screen active time. So if you don't want it to show you a whole lot of hours on standby mode, just switch after 20 seconds. So as far as you should update to iOS 17.2, if you haven't yet already, I probably just hold off for a bit. The journal app and other bugs, as I mentioned, do seem to pop up a lot. Or if you want something more, something stable or a little bit more stable, and if you don't want any bugs or issues, I'd wait for iOS 17.1.1. So that's it for iOS 17.2 beta 1. Let me know down below if you found any other features that I haven't mentioned yet and other bug fixes and how to fix them. So that's it you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit the like button and also subscribe down below to keep yourself updated on the latest iOS updates, Apple news, and more content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.